Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to In Conversation with Rob Butler. Now, today's episode is all about my media work, TV work, radio work, um, PR coverage really, because a lot of you have asked how did I get into the media? Because obviously being a butler is one career and working in the media is very much uh, another career. And as I said, a lot of you have been asking how and why this happened. Now, when I was a youngster, I had two ambitions. I say a youngster. When I was about 14, 15, I decided I wanted to be a butler. But before that, quite a few years before that, I was always interested in movies, theatre, television work. I wouldn't have said that I had a, an ambition or a dream to be uh, a presenter or work in the kind of television I work in now. I was probably more interested in movies and the theatre. And that was my two kind of passions. When I was 11 years old, 10, 11 years old, I, in my primary school, I started up a drama club in my classroom. And I think it was every Wednesday afternoon and we put together plays. And then I would direct them, produce them, of course, write them, uh, act in them, probably star in them, knowing me. Uh, and, and they were great fun, really good fun. And it was amazing that my, my teacher at that point, uh, I believe her name was Mrs. Coyle, Elaine Coyle, uh, gave me that um, opportunity to, to do that. I think she could see that I was somebody that loved the the theatre, the idea of working in theatre or being on stage and she helped me with that. Now, the only thing was when I left primary school, of course, things are very different when you go to high school. And I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but as a, as a child, especially in my high school, I was, I was bullied. And my escape was very much the theatre side of things. So I joined, again, the, I had drama classes at school. I joined um, the drama class and it was something I enjoyed. It was, it was a getaway from the reality of being bullied and mistreated as a, as a child. And it allowed me to be these fun, crazy characters. And I loved making people laugh. I mean, that is something I remember is I would do things to make the others laugh. And, and it worked. And I remember my drama, my drama uh, class, I had to pretend I was a dentist. And I had to act as if I was about to go into the dentist. I mean, this is, I was only 14, 15, so it's a few years ago. And I had the room in hysterics. And I remember thinking, this is really what I want to do. You know, I want to be able to kind of um, entertain people. Now, strangely enough, my parents had a few friends that were in show business, in Scottish show business. And I think the most famous of these was Andy Stewart, who was a friend of my parents, uh, especially of my, my late father. And it, we spent a lot of time uh, around him and his family many years ago. This is in the 80s, early 90s. He died in 93. So my memories uh, were very much learning about the Scottish entertainment industry. And I used to get invited to his shows. And so it, it gave me this, this drive for wanting to do something similar. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing, but it gave me a drive for doing something similar or being on stage. So back at high school where I was doing the drama classes, I remember we got to a point where I started uh, sitting down with careers teachers to talk about my, my career or what I'd like to do. And the two uh, dreams at that point was either to go into acting or to become a butler. Now, I do remember saying to the careers teacher, th these are the two things I want to do. Uh, when I mentioned but the, the acting, the, the, the drama side, she was kind of like, mm, you know, it's quite a hard industry to get into. And then when I mentioned butlering, she was more focused then on trying to work out what we could do on the acting side of things. I wasn't a normal child. I didn't want just to go and work in the bank or the post office or the local Tesco or supermarket. I wanted to do something um, different, something that I enjoyed. And I also remember my drama teacher kind of saying it's a really difficult industry to get into. So it kind of, I suppose it kind of put me off it a little bit, if I can say that.
Now, right about 1993 was when I joined the local Operatic and Drama Society. And this was amazing. My father was actually in this society many, many years ago, probably around about my age uh, at that point when I would have been about uh, 16 or thereabouts. And it was amazing. I mean, to get in, you had to sing. And I was so nervous. I even remember the song. I, I sang After the Ball Is Over, which is a, an old music hall song. And obviously I must have sang okay because I, I got in. And so I was one of the kind of the, the, the I don't know what you call me, the, the backers, you know, one of the backing teams. So we, we acted and we sang, but I didn't have a kind of uh, an actual role as such. I wasn't one of the main characters in, in the two plays that we did. The two plays were Carousel and Call Me Madam. But they were great fun, absolutely great. And it was just such a great environment, a great group of people. And I was so proud to actually be on stage performing, singing, dancing. It was such a buzz. And for those of you that work in the industry, you know exactly what I mean. And it kind of confirmed to me it was something that I enjoyed. Now, when I left my high school when I was 17 years old, because my parents decided to move further north into Scotland, or to be exact, up to King Yussi, I, I left school, I had to obviously leave my drama, my drama group, which I was really sad to do because I'd, I'd only had two seasons there. But it gave me an amazing confidence. It really did, it gave me an amazing confidence and I'm really glad that I had that opportunity. And then we moved to Canusi, and I looked to see if there was any kind of local drama clubs. There was nothing, it was so kind of remote there, there was nothing quite like it. And so I then decided to focus on the butler industry or something similar. And again, as I mentioned before, that was so difficult to get into then. And I ended up going to work for Newton Moor Highland Folk Park, which is a traditional folk park where they build these old... 18th century homes, houses out of turf and um, you know you learn a lot of traditional skills, woodcraft, stone masonry, land management. It, I saw it as a, as a kind of stepping stone to work on, on a private estate, private house one day. And the reason I mentioned this is my very first piece of PR was I featured in the local paper and I can't remember, it was the Strass Bay press or something and it was because I was only 17, 18 at this point, um, uh, yeah late 17, my birthday probably was quite soon after I was in the paper and there was two of us that were taken on and we featured um, in the press because it was these two youngsters taking on these traditional crafts and relearning these um, techniques from bygone days. So it made the, the um, I, I don't know if it was the front page, but it certainly was a, it was an A4 and there was a picture of me and the other chap and the people actually training us. So it was, it was great fun and I was extremely proud. My parents were so proud that, that I'd actually got into the, the, the paper and it again ignited that passion of wanting to kind of work in, in PR or media of some kind. But I'm sorry to say, that was the only uh, kind of bit of PR I got to do for a few years at that point because soon after, uh, after being there for about a year, I then got my first butlering job working on the Ben Alder estate in Dalwhinnie. My parents and of course myself moved to Dalwhinnie and then I spent two years beginning to learn to be a butler at this house.
Now, it was in the January of 1999 on BBC2 at 7 p.m. a new TV programme began, a series called Country House, and it was all about Woban Abbey and the Marcus and Marchioness of Tavistock and the friends, family and staff. And of course, the butlers featured on it. And I was fascinated by this, this country house and I thought, well, as I want to be a butler, this is obviously the next the next thing for me to do is to go and work at this house. So I was I was very excited about this this idea. And I decided to write to the Marchioness of Tavistock to see if I could get a, a job, which I have mentioned before. And of course, eventually I secured uh, which was horrifying for my parents because that was not what they thought would happen, but I secured a job there. Now, quite soon after securing the job, I got a phone call from the BBC to actually ask if I would like to be in the reality show Country House. I say the BBC, it was the production company that worked for the BBC, uh, a wonderful chap called Nigel Havers, who was a, a producer on the programme. And I also think he directed some of the episodes as well. And Paul Summers, was the other chap that was involved. And Nigel had a, a chat with me and I couldn't believe they were asking if I wanted to be in this, this programme. And I remember, I remember it as if it was yesterday. I remember the phone call, I had it in my, my bedroom. I remember soon after going through to tell my parents who were equally excited about the fact that not only am I going to go and work for the Marcus and Marchioness of Tavistock, but I was going to feature in this prime time Friday night TV show. Now, I joined the Abbey in August of 99 and almost within a few weeks, the filming began. And we filmed right through the winter uh, into uh, the early part of 2000. And then in 2000, Country House season two began, which also featured yours truly. And I then continued to film for Country House for another season. So there was two seasons that I was in and I featured as the, the young Scottish butler that had left his home in Scotland to pursue his, his dream of becoming a butler. And they captured some amazing things. My first time on an aeroplane, my first time in London, and I should mention on the aeroplane, I actually was accompanied by my late mother and this great, great footage of my 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 mum in, in the programme. And you, 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 if you don't blink, you also see my father and my late father and you also see my brother in, in one of the one of the scenes as I'm leaving, as I'm leaving Dalwini to go to Woburn Abbey. And of course, with television, it was kind of made up a little bit. I was leaving, but that was not the time I was actually leaving. I, I came back and then I started after, but they still came up to, to film the actual going, going down. So even though the actual filming took place at Woburn Abbey after I'd started, there was some filming before. So they came up to my home in Dogwinnie, they found me with my dogs, my parents, uh, my brother, and then obviously that then was part of the opening scenes of season two's Country House. And it was amazing to suddenly find yourself on a Friday night, BBC Two, on television and suddenly people knew who you were. I mean, I used to go out and about and people would come up to me and chat to me about this this new role on, on television. And uh, yes, I got fan mail. And I should mention that the, the butler and the team there actually um, went through the fan mail to make sure it was suitable. So I was only kind of passed on certain fan mail, I think. I think it was just to protect me because I was so young. And People have said to me, did I become a bit, um, you know, did I take it my stride? Was I a bit starstruck? You know, how did I kind of act with it all? And I think my biggest regret is I think I did, I didn't realise how lucky I was to do that because it's only kind of going back into television in later years, you, you realise, you know, it was such an amazing thing to be part of and to be on a Friday night on television is quite a big thing. And I think I, it, I got to a point where 
you know, I was young, kind of a little bit kind of, um, can I say a little bit, um, I wouldn't say full of, full of myself, but very much um, got to a point where people come up and I'd know they're going to talk to me about my role. And I even remember being at the airport, I was flying home to um, Scotland and somebody came up to me and, you know, started chatting to me. And it was a bit scary because they knew all about my life and about me. And I was, a, you know, and then they said, oh, you know, they wanted an autograph. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I've got time. Where well, that wasn't the right attitude. You know, obviously, as I've learned, you should be grateful if people come and chat to you and, and want to ask you for an autograph and want to kind of spend time with you because you're putting yourself out there and, and you're, you know, the idea is that you're happy to do that. So you should be happy for people to um, obviously chat to you and when, when, when it's appropriate, of course, when it's appropriate. But um, anyway, so I did that for um, two years and it was definitely one of the, the, the best um, pro television projects I've done, even to date. It's still something that I really enjoyed, probably because my parents were involved in it. Um, a lot, you know, um, I had so many great years at Woburn Abbey, um, five magical years. I adored, adored my my old boss, the late Duke of Bedford, and his his wife, the the, the Dowager Duchess of Bedford, and of course the present Duke and Duchess and their family. Uh, uh, you know, have got a very special place in my heart. So it was a a wonderful place to be, and it was such a great project to be in, involved in. So when I went to work for the Prince of Wales, I remember the Duchess of Cornwall actually introduced me to some of their friends as the butler from television, as the, the, the boy from the, the butler from uh, Country House, the boy from Country House. Um, I should mention I was still quite young. I was only, only uh, 25 at that point, 25, 26. And um, it was it was amazing because their friends knew who I was and uh, I think even the Duchess of Cornwall had, had seen the programme. Well, she had seen the programme. Um, I never actually asked the Prince. I don't know if he actually watched it. I'm guessing he probably did, but I never actually asked him. But it was still a, a huge honour for their friends to kind of then chat to me about it. And it was amazing. You know, I felt really proud. Now, when I did join the Royal Household, I, I was kind of called up to London because there were some things in the press to say that I joined the household of the Prince of Wales. And there was a few stories out there saying that I'd been headhunted and all sorts of things. And it was amazing to suddenly find myself again in the press. You know, the, it, I think it said, um, hasn't one seen one in TV? You know, that was the kind of headline. And uh, it was, um, I mean, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. But the household said, working for the Prince of Wales, of course, I would have to stop all kind of media work because when you work for him, obviously it's a private job and they didn't want me um, doing reality shows and that kind of thing, which of course makes sense. And I, I should mention, I was approached to do other reality shows at the time, but um, I decided I wanted to focus on my career with working for the Royal Household at that point. And then I left in... 2011, left the Royal House in 2011, and within about a year, um, I'd suddenly got myself back into working in television. I think the first show I did was Can You Be Your Own Boss? And it was all about setting up businesses, and at that point I set up a, a, a company called Nicholas Veach, and I went along to uh, try to win support from a business backer who uh, was quite a well-known um, I not I wouldn't say he was well known, but his business uh, was a well known business, and he was basically putting money in to support new businesses. So it seemed really good fun, and I did quite a bit of filming for it. And amazingly, uh, from memory, most of it ended up in the cutting room floor anyway. So, so that was that. But it was great to be back in front of camera to have the experience of of doing what I'd done before. But then uh, I got myself uh, an agent. And then the media work just started coming in because at that point I had also decided I was going to set up a butler school, an etiquette school. And of course, when you do things like that, because of my background, media, press, television kind of comes hand in hand. Of course, press and media, because of the etiquette side of things, when people do things wrong, the butler school, of course, is, has got interest in the media world as well. And also from the point of television. And then um, different TV shows have come along um, over the over the past well it's now 10 years so over the past 10 years i've been involved in a couple of tv series including can't get the staff 
where I was the, uh, I was obviously interviewed, but I was also the butler. I played the butler character in that, uh, showing you different tricks of the trade and tips about how to do things, which was um, great fun. I, in that, I actually uh, worked with Lady Colin Campbell, and I also hosted a dinner party with her and organised it. And it was to show people how you do how you do a dinner party in in um, certain uh, environments. And then I did. Um, Royal Recipes, there was Royal Recipes, which I was in a few of those seasons, and again, they were great fun with Michael Buck. And of course, on top of that, I've done uh, work with The One Show, uh, Good Morning Britain, uh, Rip Off Britain, where I did some guest presenting for them on Afternoon Teas, which was, again, equally brilliant fun. I've done uh, work with the great Rui Johnny's, Michael Patillo, uh, the MTV Music Awards, I've done some work with them, I've worked with Jerry Springer, uh, I've worked with Kelly Clarkson, uh, the American talk show host, who's wonderful, absolutely great fun. I've been on her show, teaching her how to have an afternoon tea. So I do a lot of um, media TV work where I go along and either do guest presenting or I'm teaching the, the hosts, the presenters, how to do different things from lunches to dinners to afternoon teas. And I'm also a, a royal commentator, so you'll often find me on different royal documentaries that I know a lot of you have seen. And I've done so many that I can't even remember most of them. Uh, I seem to film um, quite a few every year. Um, difficult to kind of say, but there's probably some years that can be up to 25, 25, 30, different ones. So um, it keeps me busy, if I can say that. And I love it because I love the media work. And as far as press goes, I am always seem to be in the press, either because of something that I'm, I'm doing, something I'm promoting, uh, or there's even been occasions when um, the press will, will obviously look for a story and they'll write a story about yours truly. And, but as they always say, all, all PR is good PR. Well, that's what I'm told. That's what my agent tells me. <laughs> And there's also occasions when I worked at the Press Association where there's maybe a story. I remember uh, Anna Winter, uh, who is, I believe, the editor of Vogue. I hope I've got that right. Forgive me if I've got it wrong. And she had a pair of sunglasses on when she was talking to the Queen. I didn't realise she has got an eye condition, apparently. That's what's been said. But I was asked, you know, if you wear, should you wear sunglasses when you're talking to somebody else, and you're especially with the Queen or anyone, you always remove them. 
and I have noted that sometimes she does remove them uh, but at the time I think they tried to obviously point out that she does have an eye condition which of course gives her the right to wear them but all I was noting that sometimes she doesn't wear them when she's indoors so but I also realise it is also part of, of um, her, her brand, I suppose. You know, she's famous for the sunglasses. But I was just trying to go from an ethical point of view of saying that she shouldn't have worn them. And it became, uh, it went into front page news. It was all over, all over the news. And, but it was great PR because obviously it, it kind of puts me, puts me out there. So, so I do enjoy working with the, the press and tabloids. As I said, I've been so fortunate to work with so many different um, documentaries and programmes over the year, over the years, and I, as I say, I just feel lucky that I still get to do something that I started working in over 20 years ago. And luckily, the phone still rings. I mean, you do sometimes wait for the phone call from your agent to tell you what the next the next job is, but luckily they do come in, and and it does keep me it keeps me busy. I also enjoy what goes on behind the camera because for those of you that watch my my YouTube videos and uh, maybe TikToks or Instagrams, you'll notice that I, I create a lot of my own content. And I very much learnt from working on all these different documentaries and working with the BBC, Channel 5, Channel 4, ITV, and seeing how they do things, I've, I've kind of learned and I've bought the equipment, you know, I've got the, the, the kind of up-to-date smartphones, iPhones, I've got Canon camera, um, Rode microphones, which are the microphones we use. So I use all that to make sure I can deliver really good quality um, content as well. And the filming, um, the kind of directing, the producing, the editing, I, I do it all. I have, sometimes I have somebody that helps me. But, you know, it's something that, it's a passion, it's something I, I really, I really enjoy. I forgot to mention that as well as the commentary, as some of you know, I work with Sky News. I do royal commentary from time to time when they call in a royal expert um, for different different things, which is great fun. And also for BBC News, I've worked with them. And more, most recently, I've worked with Great Britain News, where I joined them. Uh, at the moment, I seem to be doing quite a lot with them, but I seem to join them to do to on different, again, royal, royal stories. So it's always fun to kind of be able to kind of go along and, and do some royal commentary as well, which is something I, as you know, I, I have a huge amount of respect for the royal family. I've, I feel so privileged to work for them and I enjoy actually getting to um, be able to kind of share my, my knowledge. The one thing I always do, I'm always very, um, I do, I'm a very good butler. Uh, I don't like to share anything that I class as, as that I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about. So I talk about things that are out there that are in the known, that are known in the public and um, or anything that, that I would class as when I was off duty. So obviously there was times that I wasn't working for the families and I'd be able to spend time with them and there was fun things that happened that I was like sharing. Just to give you an insight, into how much fun it was to be around them, to work with them, and sometimes I share that that kind of knowledge as well. But so I feel very lucky that I'm able to um, to to do what I do. You know, I feel lucky that I run this fabulous Royal Etiquette School and Butler School um, at Blenheim Palace. I feel you know lucky that I can work still in the media. I get to work with all these different television networks and channels, and it's um, it's great fun. Now, for anyone asking or, or wondering you know where is all these where are all these different different programs it's it's difficult to say because often i get texts emails phone calls from people saying that i'm on channel 5 i'm on channel 4 i'm on itv i mean i've even done a celebrity come down with me uh, which somebody noted was on the other week and then i got a phone call from somebody else saying that i'm on another on another channel the following night in fact one night i got a phone call from three different friends to say i was on three different programs on the same night so 
I, I don't keep track. I mean, the way my agent, myself, we kind of work, I, I do the job, obviously, hopefully I get paid for the work and then it's, it's over to the channel um, to do what they want with it. And of course it gets sold on to other networks and that's when you might get to see it in, um, in America, uh, Australia, other countries, in the UK from time to time, obviously, when I do something, say, for American television, eventually it might get shown in the UK. So it's, um, it's, it's great fun. As, as I said, I, I just feel um, honoured to be able to, to do what I do and I get a lot of fun from it. I've even, I mean, some of the, the, the kind of highlights as well. I mean, I remember um, doing 60 Minutes Australia, which is an amazing programme to be asked to do. And I remember during Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, I remember kind of working, uh, filming for that, being interviewed for that. Um, as I said, working with Kayla Clarks and actually being on her show. And I mean, that's maybe that's a conversation for another day because that was an amazing an amazing experience and um wonderful wonderful lady absolute lady and great fun great fun to be involved in and of course as i mentioned pr i've done campaigns for different for different people i've done campaigns for madame tussauds i've done campaigns for stays uh, the the holiday company uh, over in australia i've done campaigns for penhaligans I've done guest commentary for EasyJet. There's quite a variety of um, different brands that I've worked with and I continue to work with and I support. And in the coming years, I'll continue to work with obviously more exciting brands and do more coverage and more documentaries. And um, I would love to do more guest presenting, which hopefully um, I'm actually doing some exciting presenting uh, which I can't tell you about just now, but in a couple of months for something. So um, there's always uh, exciting things in the pipeline and it, all, it keeps putting me out there. And so I get to do uh, something that I, I had a passion of doing when I was a youngster. And I said, okay, it's not quite being in the movies, but you know, equally it's, it's, um, it's fun. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed today's end conversation. Thank you for joining me. Shumba has been nearby, but he keeps disappearing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him alone. But I'm sure I'll get him involved in next week's at home with the Rob Butler. But thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for all the comments, which I'm still trying to keep up with, but I'm always grateful for the comments. Keep your ideas coming in. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation all about my media work, media lifestyle. I will share a video showcasing some of that after this video. I hope you enjoy it. 
And as I said, have uh, stay safe, have a lovely weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.